and welcome back to The Knitting Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're going to do the Honeycomb Knit Baby Blanket. This is a really great design, and it actually doesn't require you to do a lot of color changes because the rainbow itself is in the yarn itself with the Red Heart Super Saver Ogo. So what this is, I'm going to concentrate on two things that are major in this tutorial. We're going to work on this particular honeycomb stitch that you see. It is a one-sided pattern and you can see it really works out well. And with the particular Ogo, you can see that the colors will transition on its own. So you don't have to worry about that. The yarn is being carried up along the side. So when it's not in use, it's just up on the side. So you don't have to worry about cutting your yarn for that either. And also the second thing I want to concentrate is adding on an additional border. So we're going to start with the border and then you do your honeycomb and then you finish with the border and then you come back on either side. So I've left the sample without the border so I can show you how to do that and I left it on the side that's going to carry the yarn to give you a better demonstration. So this particular tutorial I'm going to also uh, do some assumptions and let's talk about that next. On page number two you're going to notice that we're going to cast on 133 stitches and then you're going to just go across back and forth in the garter stitch which is just the knit stitch back and forth for 11 rows before we start doing the honeycomb. Before you start doing the honeycomb though, we have to increase a certain amount of stitches in order to have the tension. So the honeycomb itself causes tension to go in. So if you actually use the same stitches when you start, it's going to make the interior buckle in like this. So we wanna increase our stitches before we do the honeycomb itself. We're going to then work your way through the honeycomb throughout the whole blanket, and then you're going to decrease right at the end as you do the final border of this. So that's also gonna be something I'm going to verbally talk about here, but in the sample that you'll see on camera, I've already assumed that you've already done the increase, and that's something that I'm gonna be demonstrating in just a few seconds from now. So let's talk about the needle. You'll need a five and a half millimeter circular knitting needle that's 36 inches long because it has to hold the whole blanket, and, and US, that's US nine. So without further ado, I'm to demonstrate the same yarn on camera and we're going to get ourselves started right now. So let's take a quick peek at this pattern here. It's the Red Heart Honeycomb Baby Blanket and Knit and so what we're using is Red Heart Super Saver Ogo. The colors are transitioning just like you see. So when you look at it, not every one of the pockets is a solid color. Sometimes it can be, sometimes it can be transitioning like this. Just let it go with the flow because that's the whole point of this. So you're going to notice is that the honeycomb is really quite textured. And so you'll notice that it will thicken up the material. Also, we are using the garter stitch, which is just the knit stitch back and forth, which also thickens up the fabric as well. So it's a really beautiful idea. And when you stretch it out, it looks amazing. So you'll be using that today. And you will notice on page number two, when we flip, you'll have a crochet, sorry, a knit diagram. And so the knit diagram is showing after the blanket has done the increase. So looking here on page number two, you're gonna cast on with the main color, MC is main color, and it's 133 stitches. So you'll get that done. And then you're gonna go back and forth for 11 rows, and you're going to do the knit stitch. When you do the knit stitch over and over and over, it creates this look here, and that's also called the garter stitch. So if you're new to knitting, that's what that is. So you're going to then have the 11 rows done, and then the next row is going to be an increase row, and it's done on the wrong side. WS is the wrong side. If you're ever confused, if you just go to the first page, you will see all of the abbreviations that you will be able to match so that you can follow along. Once you have this particular one done, you're then going to proceed to the honeycomb pattern and you will follow the chart. And we're gonna work through all of this and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So as we start off with 11 rows in the garter stitch, by the time you get through the honeycomb stitch is that the final rows that you'll have left at the very end will also be these 11 rows of that to have the balance. And then we're going to add on um, side panels to that as well if you wish. So you'll notice that we're going to carry the yarn up on the side so you don't want to ever get rid of those and just let the yarn ball just work itself out. So I'm going to show you how to cast on today and I'm going to show you what the knit stitch is and I'm also going to show you what the make one is and one so that you know how to do the increase. So let's do cast on. I'm just going to do a small swatch with you on camera but just cast on that number. I will be using circular knitting needles. The distance should be 36 inches. This is just a small swatch on camera, so this distance is not as big uh, because it's harder to film, obviously, a bigger project like that here on camera. So you're going to start off, and you're going to start off with a slip knot. So no matter how you want to do your slip knot, just make it happen, and you are going to put that on one of your knitting needles. 
I'm going to assume that you know how to knit, but if you don't, um, just go on our channel. We have beginning tutorials on how to do all the basics that you see on camera today. So let's pull the yarn and let's begin to do a cast on process. And you can cast on any way that you want to. I'm going to show you my twist and transfer method. So I'm going to load up the yarn to my hand. You may hold it a different way. You also may be doing continental. Again, you decide what works for you. You're going to put the empty knitting needle through the loop that is on the other side. Use your finger to prevent that from sliding off. And you're just gonna go on the underside and just go into the same loop so then when you look straight down on it, you can see that it's inside the same loop and you were going to take the yarn that is leading to the yarn ball and wrap it around the back needle and pull through. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this new loop that is on this needle that is closest to you and you're just going to rotate the needle around so that it's behind and you're going to use this needle that I'm wiggling right here and you're going to scoop it and put it onto that same needle, slide down to the shaft, okay? And then here, here you go. So in technical terms, this is called the barrel. So the flat space is called the barrel. And so now you have two cast-ons, so one and two. So then go into the new one, wrap the back needle, pull through, so flip it forward, move the needle so that the one on the right is behind, and scoop it up and you don't want to pull too tight because you want to be able to maneuver it and you want to keep casting on so that you have 133 stitches all the way across okay so I'm just going to do a few more and then I'm going to demonstrate on how to do the garter stitch because you'll need to do it for 11 rows so just put me on pause and cast on your 133 and I'll be right back in a moment so once you have 133 stitches on this needle here, you're gonna obviously have a lot more. You're going to start rows number one through 11 with just doing the knit stitch back and forth, okay? This is called the garter stitch. And what you're going to do is take this needle here, the empty one, and you're going to insert it into the same position that you would have been doing if you were adding more stitches for the cast on. So just going in on the back side, okay? You can see it's sharing the same loop and wrap the back needle and flip it forward. And this time we're not casting on anymore. That is the new stitch. You're just going to slide that one off. Up. And then go to your next one. So slide up underneath. This is called the knit stitch. Wrap the back needle, flip forward, and slide. So in, back, flip, and side. So in, back, flip, side. Okay, this is also called yarn over when you go over top of your needle and you're just doing the knit stitch all the way across. So please do your knit stitch all the way across your 133 stitches that you have. And once you're at the end and you run out, this one will be empty, turn your whole knitting needle around and you're going to do row number two, which will also be the knit stitch. So in row number two, you're just gonna go in, same position, okay, the same yarn leading to the yarn ball, wrap the back needle and across. So you can see that these 11 rows may take you a bit of time, but you'll have a nice thick border, you know, to wrap the baby up in love and warmth. And you're just gonna knit stitch back and forth until you get 11 rows done. So please do 11 rows of this stitch. This is the knit stitch back and forth, which is also called the garter stitch. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to assume that that's done. And I'm going to show you then how to increase stitches before you can start doing the honeycomb procedure. And that'll be coming up next. So let's cover on doing the increase row before you can start the honeycomb. So what we've done here is that you need to do 11 rows of the garter stitch, which is just the knit stitch back and forth. And once you have those 11 done, you're then going to proceed to the increase row. I'm going to explain it to you, but I'm also gonna demonstrate what is M1 on camera so that you understand. So the first 10 stitches will be knit. So K10 means knit next 10 stitches. Then you're going to do make one, and then the repeat then all the way across is going to be knit 14 stitches in a row, and then you're gonna make one. 
you'll knit 14 stitches in a row and make one and you keep doing that all the way to the other side until there is 11 stitches that are left over and the final 11 it says k11 you're going to knit the final 11 stitches and this will increase you from 133 stitches to 142 which is the multiple of what you need here in the diagram to make the honeycomb so let me demonstrate what the m1 is and i will show you that next so in the pattern, it would have said that you have to K10, so knit 10, and then M1. So let me just knit two and just demonstrate what M1 is. So I'm just going to knit the first two. So whenever you have to do an M1, in your inspirations patterns, it's always going to be the same information. And what we need to do is that we need to pick up the span that is in between right here. See this right here? That's the span that you want. And you wanna use this needle here to pick it up. So just carefully loop it around and pick it up onto the left needle. And it's just one strand and you're gonna pick it up like this. And I'm using my finger to kind of pull it back onto this needle here. You're then going to do the knit stitch, but you're gonna knit with this new one here. And it's a little bit tricky if you're new at it. And what you need to do is you need to go into this here, okay? So you're just gonna go in here and you're just gonna get that same loop, but you're just gonna get it from the back side here, like that. I'll demonstrate this a couple of times. You're gonna wrap the back needle and flip it forward. And you've now just created an M1. You've just created a stitch out of thin air. So let's demonstrate this one more time. And so you see the strand here? That's where you want to pick it up with the left needle. It's all about tension control. So just if you're struggling, you're in my club. You're then going to take your right needle and you're going to go in through the front here and pick up that same loop. Use your left hand or your finger to be able to kind of help push it onto the needle. If you, if you need that additional help. And once it's in, wrap and coming through, and you've just now made a stitch out of thin air, so just pull that off, and then you can knit the remaining. So follow on the pattern, the repeating in order to do that, and make sure that you have 142 stitches at the end of that, once you have the increase, and we're gonna be starting to doing the honeycomb pattern in just a few seconds from now. So I've just cast it on a whole new set of stitches so that I have the right multiple so I can demonstrate here the honeycomb stitch. So after 11 rows and one increase, it'll be a nice thick border just like you see here. And then we're going to start increasing to this. So you're going to need a secondary color. Do not fasten anything off, any of the loose colors that we're going to have. We're just going to let just hang off to the side and we're going to pick that up later. So we're going to start in the pattern itself from the honeycomb and we're going to do rows number one through 20 and I will demonstrate what this is. It looks complicated in the chart, but it's really not. And so grab whatever color that you would like to do and we're going to start doing the honeycomb and we'll start row number one in just a moment. To start a brand new color, I do not want you to create a slip knot and I just want you to just kind of loop it. So leave it long enough so that you can uh, use a tapestry needle later and I'll show you how to fasten that in. So just create a loop just like you see here and you want to use that to begin to do row number one. So in row number one, three and five, it's always going to be the same information but the first time that we go to start doing this you're going to notice is that we need to establish the connection spots in order to do the slip stitching which is not a big deal. So we're going to start off first and you were going to with the color A which is the new color you're going to knit the first two. So going in, and instead of using the white here, you're just gonna let it hold and just put that loop around the back needle and you're going to knit that one. And then just reposition that yarn into your hands so that the strand is going to the yarn ball and leaving that tail off to the side. And it's gonna be loose at first, but don't worry about it. We're gonna secure that later. And you're going to knit the next one with that same color. Now we're going to establish our knit pattern going across and you're going to notice is that the first time we do this, you're going to uh, be able to really count quite easily on what this is. So you're going to slip stitch to purl wise in the back. So what this means is that this yarn has to stay to the back side. No big deal. That's where it is. So you don't have to do any uh, fumbling with that. And the next two stitches, you want to slip stitch purl wise. So put the needle here directly like this in front 
and drag it off. And you're gonna slip stitch two like that. So that's one. And you're gonna do the next one. So straight on in and pull off. This is still in the back. And so now you're going to knit the next six in a row. Okay, so just wrap the back needle and do the next six. So you can see that the white color is here. This white color is going to be what drags it up to make it look like the honeycomb stitch. So let's do six stitches in a row with this color. And there's six. And so now you're gonna repeat what you already know. So you see how you had two here? So the next two is slip stitch pearl wise in the back. So just take this needle, go up through and pull off. Do that one and do the next one. So do two in a row. And then how many stitches are you gonna knit with this new color? Hopefully you said six. And I want you to go all the way across in that same formation and I will meet you at the end where we're going to have just a couple stitches left and I will demonstrate on how to finish that in just a moment. So please just continue to repeat the same steps that you see and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming up near to the end and I have four stitches left. So the next two are going to be slip stitch pearl wise, which was what you already know. And then the last two will be the final color that, you, that you've been playing with. Say for example, you were missing a stitch somewhere because that's what happened to me on my sample when I started because I didn't know the multiple. You can always just go and do um, a make one at anywhere in this in order to get your stitch count. So maybe you were missing a stitch here. You could always do a make one and just make an additional stitch. You probably will not notice if it's not a big deal like that. So that's something that you can consider. So I'm going to slip stitch pearl wise the next two and then the very final two of this row should be this color here. Okay, so you had, should have what is equal balance in the pattern itself. So it's really important that you had the stitch counts proper when you started this row, but you can always improvise if you have to. So check off number one off a checklist and we're gonna move on to row number two. Let's turn our work and begin row number two. So rotate your whole thing around and just don't get your yarns all tangled up with each other with the needle. Just kind of keep everything separate from each other. And you're only going to be working with this. So this here is the starting strand here on this side. And then the other side has the carried up yarn. So row number two, you're going to start off and you're going to do a purl all the way across. And you're also going to slip stitch these whites. But because you've already counted it and you, because you can already see it, it's a nice easy row. So just coming into the front end and you're going to purl the first two. So flip it backwards. So this here is going to be slip stitch, okay, purl wise with the yarn in the front. So the yarn is already in the front, it's closest to you. So you're just gonna slip stitch purl wise. So just going in and pull off and then go into the next one, pull off. It's the same color as you see. And then you're just going to start and purl starting in the next one. So these carrying yarns that you see should be on this side here because you're carrying in the front. So I'm just more worried about just purling the same color. So when I see the white and I know that my stitch counts are right, I don't have to really count so much. And whatever color you, you decided to do. Hey Google, pause. I don't know why that happened. So here's the white, and you were just going to pull off, slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the front. So the yarn is already in the front, so you don't have to worry about it, and continue to purl across. So do this all the way across, and this is row number two, and I'll be right back in a moment. Nice and easy. And because the first one here, because you just started this, is gonna be loose, just knit it or purl it like you normally would. And we're gonna pull that loose end um, later in the project. So you can pull it now a little bit, but we're gonna secure it later. And you're gonna turn your work and we're gonna do number three and check off number two on your list. So let's begin number three. So you're still gonna use the same color that you've been playing with. 
and just uh, leave that white out of the out of position you can still see where the white is on the needles and so this time you're going to knit yourself all the way across and then when you run into the white you just need to slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the back the yarn is already in the back so you just have to slide it off and carry on and and just continue to knit only the ones that are in color okay so you'll do this all the way across for row number three and i'll meet you back here in just a moment i'll already have my work turned and ready for row number four when we come back in a second so hopefully you check number three off your list let's do number four we're back to the wrong side of the work you can almost tell now uh, on the other side here is the good side of the work so you're on the back and you need to start purling okay so you'll purl the first two using the same color so we're not switching to white yet so it's too soon and you're going to purl the first two and you can see where the white is and you, again you're going to purl i sorry you're going to slip stitch purl wise and just with the yarn in the front it's already in the front so you just have to slide and then you just continue to purl the colors that you have okay so make sure you continue to slide those whites or whatever color you decided as your main color and continue along and do this all the way for number four it's exactly what you already know and i will have my work and turned and ready for row number five in just a few moments from now so hopefully you checked off number four let's do for number five number five is also just the knit stitch across and when you do those whites yeah you're right you're just going to continue to do what you already know slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the back it's already in the back so just slip and pull off so you can see you're dragging up that row to create that honeycomb shape so just knit stitch just the color itself and just slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the back when you hit those whites and do this for row number five and i'll be right back with my yarn already or with my project already turned and ready to show you number six in just a few moments let's begin row number six with my yarn already turned it's going to be a purl row and also you're still going to slip stitch that white for the very final time on row number six so with the yarn in the front which it already is just slip stitch pull off and then just continue to purl the colors only Okay, so do that all the way across for row number six. We're going to talk about repeating in just a few moments, but we're also going to be shifting our honeycomb in the future as well. So let's do that. So I'll see you at the end of this row, number six. So I've just finished number six. In reading ahead in the pattern, whenever you start the final border, you can either finish after a row number six or after a row number 16. So this technically I could start a border if I was happy with the, the height of it and start it now. But I don't want to because I want to continue to show you the other part of the honeycomb because the honeycomb in the other section will be here in the middle. But for the next four rows, what we want to do is when you go to start and do the knit stitch, you want to leave this color off to the side now and you want to pull that white back into position. And when you pull that white back into position, leave a long enough tail so that it can span the distance that you have here. So when you go to knit the first one, make sure it's carrying relatively loosely so it doesn't compress the beginning like this. Okay, so if it's too tight, what happens is, is that you'll crunch it down and therefore it will not be resting properly. So you just want it relatively loosely. Now for this row number uh, seven, eight, nine and ten the next four rows which i'm explaining now is just going to be the knit stitch back and forth okay so you'll just do rows number um, seven eight nine and ten just the knit stitch this means that that white that you've been carrying up is no longer going to be carried and you're just going to knit it as you normally would so you're no longer doing your pearls okay so what i want you to do for the next four rows is just knit stitch back and forth and I'm gonna pick you up on row number 11 in just a moment. And row number 11, we're gonna bring back the fancy color again. In my case, it'll be yellow, and we'll demonstrate the other portion of the honeycomb stitch, which is going to be uh, position, positioning differently. So please do this all the way across, rows number seven, eight, nine, and 10, knit stitch back and forth, and it will look very much like how you started the border. And I'll be right back in a moment. So rows number 11 through 16 are going to be the next one using the opposite color than what you have been using, so not the main color. So now you're going to start and you are going to reposition where the honeycomb is. So we're going to start with just there, let the white just rest out of the way. And when you pick this one up, it's like what I said before, if you pull too tight, it's going to compress. So when you go to wrap the first time, make sure that it's relatively loose, but not too crazy. Okay, so you're just gonna 
knit the first one, and you're going to knit the first six actually. So do that one, and you're going to do that. So just keep an eye on that to make sure that it's carrying up relatively loose. The carried yarn will be buried into the project later. So you're knitting the first six with this opposite color than the main color. And this is shifting the honeycomb over. So once you have the first six in, then the next two are going to be the slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the back. It's already in the back. So you're just gonna do what you normally did and you're gonna pull the next two. And what you're doing is you're reestablishing the honeycomb shape itself and moving that over. So then you're gonna start and knit the next six and you're gonna do this all the way across. So you can see that once you do this row, you don't have to count anymore. You just have to look for the visual signs of the coloring, which makes it a lot easier for you. So once you can see six done, then you're just gonna slip stitch purl wise with the yarn already in the back to carry that. And that'll be the next framework for the next honeycomb that will happen. Please do this all the way across. The last six stitches should just be this, uh, this color that I'm holding right now and I will be right back at the end of number 11 and I'll be right back in a second. So as I promised the last six should be this secondary color that you're working with. In my case it's right so everything is good. The stitch counts are in line and that was row number 11. So let's turn your work and let's begin number 12. Let's begin number 12 you're just going to start with the purling stitch and you're just looking for the same color to play with. You can see the white is on the barrel and it will be coming up. And what are you gonna do when you get to the white? Hopefully you said slip stitch, purl wise with the yarn in the front. The yarn is already in the front, so you don't have to worry about it, just have to pull it off. And so the six here are being done. I'm not, I don't need to count, I just said it. But then when you see the white, just pull it off and then continue along purling the same color that you see. Please do this all the way across. This is row number 12. Row number 13, you're just going to knit all the way across and make sure that you do slip stitch those whites that you have. Again, slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the back. The yarn is already in the back so you don't have to do any fancy footwork. Now that you're starting to see this pattern coming out, you can see that it's pretty easy to maintain. Okay, so when you get run into the white, just kind of pull it off and then continue to knit the rest. Going across, this is row number 13. I'll be right back. Number 14, we're back on the back side of it. It's called the wrong side. And we are just going to reset and we're going to purl our way across. And what happens when you run into the white? If you said that you're just going to slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the front, that's the right answer. Okay, you probably thought of it. You just didn't have to say it the whole thing. It's a mouthful, I get it. So we're just going to keep purling and I'm looking for the whites to tell me what to do. Okay, there it is. So I'm just gonna pull off and pull off and continue to purl and keep doing that across. And this is row number 14. Okay, number 15, you're back to knitting again, straight across. Uh, when you hit the whites, just wanna slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the back. The yarn is already in the back, so you don't have to worry about it. Just keep just sliding them on. Okay, so when you see the whites or the main color that you're using, slip stitch and keep on going. Please do this row for number 15. Okay, number 16 is next and you're going to purl yourself across and when you hit the white, what are you gonna do? If you said you're gonna slip stitch purl wise with the yarn in the front, that's the right answer. If you said something else, that's not the right answer. <laughs> and we're going to continue just to purl. So I'm just looking for the whites to tell me what to do. And when I come at the end of this row, what's going to happen is that I'm going to talk to you about the repeat again, because it's going to be the finishing of row number 16. So just drag the whites off and continue to purl what you can see. Please do that all the way across number 16 and I'll be right back. Row number 16 is now complete. As I mentioned before, row number six or row number 16 is the ending of doing a multiple of the honeycomb itself. 
So if you wanna continue it and build more honeycombs, you still have to do rows number 17, 18, 19, and 20, which is basically the white section that you see. So you're just gonna to continue to knit stitch back and forth with just the white only. And then you're going to go back to the chart and start rows number one through 20 all over again. So it says to give a certain amount of inches to 39 inches for the baby size. So 39 could finish you on a row number six or 16. It doesn't really matter. But then the next row after that to get yourself back to the border, you have to do a decreased stitch. So what you have to do is that the next uh, four rows from where you are right now, you have to just go back and forth four times with just the knit stitch with the white. And so that means that you'll pick up the white again that you'll have here. You won't be sliding those off anymore. So you'll do that. So what I'm gonna talk about next is that you're going to have to do a decrease row in order to get yourself back to into alignment to the original border that you had. Okay, as this thing gets bigger, it'll sit flatter. So what we have to do is eliminate stitches with a, a knit two together, which is what I'll demonstrate next. So let's do that. So let's pretend I have this to the size I want and I've either finished on a row number six or row number 16. The next row is going to be a decrease row. And what it says, it says knit nine and then put two together, so K2 together. The repeat then is knit 13 and then K2 together, knit 13, put K2 together. And you're gonna do this all the way to the end and the last 11 stitches will then be just a knit stitch. So you're going to use the white, and when you start with the white, as I mentioned, make sure that the first time you're using it, you're just carrying it up on the side relatively loosely so that it doesn't buckle the project, and you're just going to knit in the multiple that it wants. So you can either knit nine and then put uh, K2 together, and then you start your knit 13, put K2 together. To knit, put two together, what's gonna happen is that you'll just go into two stitches at the same time, and you'll gather two, and when you go to knit, you grab around the two, and then these two just becomes one stitch. So I want you to follow the instructions for the decrease row to get yourself there. Once you have that row done, the last 11 rows will just be the knit stitch back and forth, it's the garter stitch, and then you're gonna have a nice thick border just like you did on the original sample here. Okay, so this is what you see. So this is my uh, reduction plus also my um, 11 rows and it will match the way that it started in the beginning. So you're either, when you finish on the row, you're finishing here. So you see this was row number 16, but if you finished on number six, you would have another box that's directly in the middle here. So you have to decide where you wanna finish and you can make it pretty much any uh, height that you would like to do. So what I want to do is that I wanted to show you how to cast off is next, and then I'm gonna show you how to build onto a side edge. When you're ready to cast off, you're going to start and do the knit stitch as you know it to be, so for the first stitch. You're then going to knit the very next stitch as you know it to be, and you'll have two loops on this needle here that I'm pointing at, right here. Now, what you're going to do is carefully, and with a little bit of extra give to it, you're gonna take the first loop and drag it up on over like this. This is called the bind off. So then you'll knit the next one, Sorry, the cat and dogs are acting up behind me. So you're gonna take that one, take the first one up and over. So be a little bit loose with it because if you're too tight, it doesn't have any give. And you're gonna do this all the way across. This is called the bind off. And I'll meet you at the other side in just a moment. So when you get to your very last one, you are going to knit that last one. And then you're gonna take this one up and over. And carefully, when you do this, you'll be left with one loop on the hook, sorry, on the knitting needle. Okay, and you're gonna pull up on it. Okay. Once you pull that up, you're just gonna grab your scissors and you wanna leave a little bit of a longer tail so you can use to secure that. So you're just gonna cut it. And carefully push that yarn through that opening loop. And that will secure it from unraveling. So now we get rid of the knitting needles. So any kind of loose ends that we're going to have, including the, the yellow that we had, we wanna be able to take care of everything at the same time. So everything makes sure you kind of have longer tails. So to secure the last one, and you're gonna do the same with all of them, is that you are just going to put it into your tapestry needle 
and stay towards the back of it so you can clearly tell which is front and which is back. So stay on the back side and start dragging the yarn through the stitch work. Now just don't go between stitches, go in between plies as well. It'll help it get stuck and when you pull it the first time, make sure you don't change the shape of your project by over tightening it and just go back and forth the total a minimum of three times. So some people like to do more or less or whatever, but uh, this is ultimately the right solution. So you're gonna do that. So you're gonna have the tails that left are left over from the ogo being changed over, like if you had to change your ogo and any kind of like when you started or stopped. So what you're going to do is when you tighten it for the first time and when you've been carrying it up on the sides, you wanna make sure that you are tightening to the point where it looks the same as everything else. And you only want to fasten within the same color itself so, and stay on the back side here of the project only. Okay, so you want to kind of pull snug on it, but you don't want to over tighten it so that it's misshaping the project as well. And back and forth a total of three times. And try to separate those plies, it, it'll be much easier for you. So any kind of loose ends that you have, including the very first strand that you started with, you're going to want to do the same thing. And on this side here, you'll have the carrying yarn. And on the other side, you won't have any carrying yarn at all because we've always were changing on the same side. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to demonstrate on how to attach a border or a side edge here. Now, I did it on the other sample on the good side that does not have any of the carrying yarn, but I think for tutorial reasons, it's better that I show you this because it's the same information. It's just, you don't have to worry about the carrying yarn. So let's do that next. So I haven't woven in my ends yet here. So I'll leave that in your capable hands when you go to do it. And what's gonna happen here is that we're going to have the right side facing up, so the good side facing up, and just equally space out your single crochets when you go across. They say it's about every two to three, um, like every two and three, um, stitches that you have to do. Now, when you look at it from this perspective, you can see that there's one stitch, two, three. There's not one in every one of those. It's about every two, and two, and then maybe the third one, and you just want to equally space it so it looks decent. So when you go to do this, when you do this, you'll notice that there's going to be a little bit of a ridge on the back side here, but it will still look flat on this side when you go to begin. When you are using the strands with that we're going to be carrying over like we did, Okay, we want to keep the strands on the back side of the project, which I will demonstrate next. So grab your same knitting needles and we're going to grab the main color, which in my case is white, and I'll show you how to attach. And then you do 11 rows back and forth in the garter stitch. So let's begin. We're going to create a loop with the, the new yarn and we want to just start right on an edge and we're just going to use our knitting needle and we're just going to go into the side. Okay, so any carrying yarn you want to leave towards the back of the of the project and it will be staying in behind and you're just going to put this on and carefully and just take your time just pull it through and what you're going to do is you're going to start gathering them on here so you're just going to go to the next one so just roughly space it and only using the yarn that's going to the yarn ball just gather So if you put them too close together, what's going to happen is that it will buckle. And if it's too far apart, um, like it'll probably ruffle if it's too close. But if it's um, too far apart, then um, what's, it'll just start dragging itself in. So it's just a rough guess. Knitting is really quite um, stretchable. So you can't really go too wrong with it. And you're just going to go along your entire edge, just gathering your loops onto your needle so that they'll be ready to go then for the other 11 rows that you'll need. So keeping the strand that's carrying in behind so that it's not on the front of the project and it's out of the way and hidden. And just gather all away across and I'll be right back in a moment. So I've now just come right into the edge and we are going to then turn your work and then you're just gonna knit like you normally would. Just grab the other needle and just go back and forth the knit stitch until 11 rows are complete. And you're gonna do the same with the other side. Just make sure that when you gather them, like the first time you're on the right side of the work, so the front side, and so therefore it'll stay consistent with the look of the other. 
okay? And this will really tell you if it's working out or not. Okay, so it may take a bit of practice, and if you don't want to do a border, then you can't, you don't have to, but um, it does make it look finished, and uh, it'll probably be less catchy for the baby to be able to use as well. And it's something that could be heirloom, so you may want to last it forever. So just do these final touches, and you will be pretty happy with yourself. So the very first loop is always a little loose, so just use it as normal, and then when you go to secure your loose ends in the end, when you pull things tight, you can get everything to work out again. And so therefore you'll have your attaching and then you just have to do your 11 rows. So you've already done one, so 10 more, and then you're going to cast off and then you'll do the same with the other side. And therefore you'll have a nice border uh, all the way around because you have a thick border when you started, one that you finished, and now you're adding one to the, this side and then again to the other. So this would be how you would do the honeycomb baby rainbow blanket by yarnspirations.com.